Welcome back to the Student Hub Live STEM Showcase. In this session, we take a look at engineering and innovation. And I'm joined by Anne-Marie Gallen, who will be talking about women in engineering, and uh, Georgie Holden and Nicole Ott, who'll be talking about innovation and design. Anne-Marie, I wonder if we can first start with you, because you have been um, in the engine. You've been an engineer um, at the BBC, and you've also been an engineer for over 26 years ago, and returned to it mm -hmm. in the last five years, and realised that not a huge amount had changed. So, why did you want to talk about women in engineering, and what is happening at the moment? Well, coming back to engineering after such a big break, I thought that things had changed. I'd been working in physics for a long time and the number of women joining physics had increased in the university and out in the real world, if you like. But I was surprised, actually, that so few women were still working in engineering and were studying in engineering at the Open University. So I was surprised about that. And with some of my other female colleagues in the, in the faculty, we decided to have a look at it. So... What is it about women in engineering that, that's causing less women to be proportionately representing? Oh, if I could answer that question, it'd take a lot longer than 15 minutes, but lots of things, I think. I think it's partly the way we sell it, partly the way that engineers are seen in the world. And um, it's just, it's not got a good image for women. I don't know why, because it's one of the most exciting professions I've ever worked in. So we're offering um, more support to female engineering students here at the Open University. It's something that, that you're trying to tackle and do something about, isn't it? Yes, it absolutely is. So every year around mid-June, there's an International Women in Engineering Day that happens all around the world. So to celebrate women in engineering, to, to look at our history, see where we've come from and, and what we've contributed to the world of engineering. And we at the Open University also reflect that. We have a Women in Engineering conference every year. We've just had a, our third year in a row and it's been very exciting. Every year it gets bigger, more women are attending, more people are involved in the whole thing and it just gets more and more fun every time. Shall we take a look at what went on? Oh, go on. That's a good idea. Studying Environmental Technologies Bachelor's Degree with the OU. I decided to be an engineer when I was 13 and I'm doing the Masters so that I can become a, a chartered engineer in the future. I've just started my first module um, of engineering. I'm doing T192 and we're here at the Women in Engineering Conference. I'm currently studying a BEng, and I decided to study because somebody told me I couldn't. I did a previous fine art degree about 15 years ago and I've always been creative, I've always wanted to fix things and problem solve, um, but I didn't, it didn't come into my head that the word engineer could be a thing I could do. It's a great career with fantastic opportunities. We need more diversity in engineering. We will get better engineering solutions if we have a more diverse workforce. The more I learned about it, the more I realised I was, I was actually very interested and passionate about it. And then the more I realised, well, I'm good at this. So I decided to take it a step further and to go and get my degree. There is a skills shortage in the UK and in other countries of really well qualified problem solvers, which is what, let's face it, engineers are. And we're currently in a situation where, you know, women make up 50% of the population but only make up about 10% of the engineering workforce. And that's a huge missed opportunity and missed resource. It's well known that companies uh, that have equal representation of women at all levels do better than other companies do. My passion is to get more women into engineering. There's no reason why women can't be engineers or anything that they want to be really. It's a no-brainer really. event that was. I hear we've got some questions on the hot desk. 
Hi, um, Diana Wright has asked a really interesting question, which is how can I be an engineer with a significant mobility disability? Um, she loves building things and solving problems. That's a really good question. Yeah. And, and women in engineering is really important, but it's part of a whole issue around inclusivity as well. What we have out there is a world of experts. I am not an expert on disability, but it sounds like this woman knows what she needs in the world. Mm -hmm. What a fantastic way to make sure that the things that we build and the problems that we solve think about the people who are going to use and the solutions. So actually, you can come along and train with us and we will try and make it as inclusive as possible as a, as a discipline. Mm -hmm. So we will look at how we can help you get qualified. We will look at how helping you get involved in all of the aspects of being an engineer. Solving problems means solving problems for everybody. Everybody, it's an inclusive world, it should be an inclusive subject. And many students choose to study at the Open University because of disability, because they like the fact that they can learn at a distance in the comfort of, of their own environment. How does it work studying engineering at the Open University? Do students need to come in and do practicals? Would that be an issue in engineering? Yes, they do need to come and do practicals at, at certain points of their training. It shouldn't be an issue because we try to be inclusive in that way as well. So we often have students who have mobility issues, who have other issues around disabilities and inclus inclusivity as well. So you come in, you start, we train our students from the beginning in how to be an engineer. So. Uh, even if you don't have the qualifications that you think you might need for engineering, we will teach you how to be an engineer. Being an engineer is partly about problem solving, it's partly about using tools like mathematics, but we train you to do that as well and we include the training in the training to be an engineer so that as you're going along you're learning how to use the tools that you need at the appropriate time. That's really exciting but also as you go through you learn all the other skills that are involved in being an engineering, the ones that people don't realise about. It's not about getting your hands dirty, it's not about just doing mathematics, it's about so much more. It's about looking at the world in a way, seeing what the problems are and solving them before they become a problem for everybody else as well. That's what engineering's about. It's about passion. And you're very passionate about it. I certainly am. Is it, is it something that um, students need to talk to other students about? I mean, it sounds like problem solving can happen in isolation, but equally there's a lot to be said for, you know, collaboration. It's all about collaboration, it's all about teamwork, it's all about talking to other people. And we have to start that process. We're a distance education organisation, as you well know. But actually, we need to get people talking to each other. That's really important. So at the end of their first level of training and the second level of training, we hold a residential school where students attend. And there are sorts of topics that they do there, problem solving topics, things in the lab, things out in the field. And we can help people with that. But also, there are other things they do talk to each other, internet, interconnect with each other, network with each other, and learn that actually they have shared ideas and shared passions. And that's also why it's important for women as well to be involved in that, because they're good communicators often, and they come along to the residential school, we get them to work together and with other people, and they can start to network and see actually, okay, I might not have the background in engineering and getting my hands dirty that other people might have, they might not all work in engineering, but they can see how it can happen, how they can start working with each other and how they can communicate well. And tell us about the Women's Engineering Society. Right, so another thing that we do for our students, we have a, a forum for our students where they can talk to each other. We have all sorts of forums for our students, but we have one for women in engineering as well, which is open to all of our students, not just women. They can come along and talk to each other there. But another thing that we offer is the Women in Engineering Society membership. So they have a student-supported membership, which we give free to our women uh, um, students, and they can join that. That's really useful, so we can support them. They can talk to each other. They can talk to each other within the Open University, but they can talk to other engineering students at other universities as well. A couple of our students, Kaz and Sarah, run a next working and they're very interested in getting other women involved in that and we can support them to go to conferences so women in engineering society have a conference every year in november and we financially support our students and academically support our students to go along to that as well so that they can start to network and tell other people other women about what it's like from their point of view as well. 
Excellent. Now, one of the things that um, often sort of occurs to me in terms of women is often they're juggling many things. They may have children. A lot mm -hmm. of Open University students are juggling various caring responsibilities and um, for a range of different factors. And one of the things you can do with the Open University is study part time. Yes. And you can pace your study at a, at a level that suits you. And I imagine that's very appealing. It, it is very appealing. Uh, what's really interesting about our women as well when they come into engineering is many of them already have a qualification and often a degree. So much more so than the men. What we find is that most of the men already work in engineering, they want to improve their careers, they want to do better, they've got to the, to the top of where they can get without a qualification. But for the women, it's about moving into engineering. Suddenly they've seen that actually all along those things that have been in the back of their mind start to surface and they might have degrees. We, we heard from a woman there who had a fine art degree, but she knew at the back of her mind there was something else she could do with that. There was another way in which she could look at the world. And, and that's something we can offer as well. So you can change what you've got into something else through engineering. Engineering is such a broad subject. It's, it, it includes so many things and it is really, really exciting and interesting. And when you bring things from other places, you can apply those and suddenly the world is much bigger. Wow. Now I have a question to ask you. How much of an engineer's mind is there and how much can be taught is do you have to have this natural ability to problem solve or is it something that you can learn along the way how does that work i think we all have a natural ability to problem solve i think we've all got that and and i think that's something that women do bring to it because i think we solve problems all the time i think that you know when you have got a family to deal with and this goes for our male students as well mm. when you're juggling your time in that if that isn't problem solving and time management and communication and, and interaction and teamwork then I don't know what is. Brilliant. That has been absolutely amazing, Anne-Marie. I can see why you're so passionate. I feel like going off and doing that now as well. Excellent. <laughs> You'd be welcome, Karen. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much. But we must deal with our second half of the session, which is about innovation. Um, and Nicole and Georgie, you have had an amazing poster competition. So tell us about innovation and design. Well, we've, we've been teaching design at the OU for a very long time. It's one of those funny subjects that sits somewhere between arts and um, engineering. And uh, we, so the qualification that we have, um, you can do it as a BA or you can do it as a BSc. Um, and we have three core courses that we've got. We've got some little props here to show you. Some people, if you've, if you've heard of U101 or it's more affectionately known as Lola by a lot of the students because if you turn the pack <laughs> upside down, <laughs> it reads Lola. <laughs> um, that, that's our starting, starting course. Um, we have a level two course, which goes into um, more the, the kind of details with, with, which are more uh, like a conventional um, design training where, where students are looking across a range of um, design disciplines. So we don't specialize in anything. We're very much about developing design thinking and the ability to apply design, not just in, in product design or um, graphics or anything else, but, but also um, in, a, in the context of, of services and mm. systems. And this is where we kind of take the engineering uh, students and give them a challenge because uh, the people who are doing the M a BSc are often find well, they're thinking about products and we're, we're trying to get people to think in a very much broader way um, and it's really interesting what comes out. So yeah. Nicole what's this chair got to do with uh, T217? So in T217 they have to design a chair actually so it's one of the first challenges they have to do but we don't really phrase Easy it that peasy. way. Easy <laughs> no, not at all. They don't, we don't really phrase it well. It's, it's, it's more design a seating device so you would really think of a different way of approaching how you sit. You don't necessarily need to have a chair. Yes, there are loads of chairs around. We sit on, you know, armchairs. We can sit on the floor. There are other ways of seating. Mm -hmm. And that's really important in design, I think, in all our three modules, that you think in a different way about the problem. So it's not all about solutions, but it's rather about how you see the problem that is behind um, a challenge you're given. And then you can inquire basically like so how could I solve it in a different innovative way not quite the same so engineering comes in there but also arts thinking lots of creativity sketching out ideas modeling printing it and um, there are different ways of approaching it and the second level is very much about learning the skills to model and to sketch 
um, so you can actually have a good ideation process. Wow, I'm thinking of a hammock right now. I think that would be a oh, lovely yes, seating arrangement. In the sun, <laughs> please. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. Now, you've had an, an, your first ever annual show. Yes. What's yeah, that? it was unbelievable. What we were you are, showing? <laughs> we are in the process of setting it up, and please come. We're having on Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock uh, a grand opening, and this grand opening is showing the best of our students' work and from where all three it? levels. Here at the campus, okay. in the Nexus is Jenny Lee Building, is yep. where Computing IT is sitting in, and it's in the kind of a ground floor open space area. And what we have is we have four students that help us design the exhibition wow. we have one yeah. tutor that comes in they're all so dedicated they come in and they design the exhibition and we had 45 ex exhibition posters submitted and we chose 33 and those are going to be shown from all three levels and today <laughs> we're going to announce winners of oh. our competition because we really wanted to show what are the best posters we got and this is the runner-up. We need a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Rebecca, and Rebecca's work is pretty clever design of a toy and really well communicated. And she got a special commendation because her design was so well communicated in a second level course that she was the best of the module. And we really congratulate Rebecca. It's amazing. And the third place. <laughs> The third place is um, Claire. She's from U101, the first level module, and she's a really important message to tell us. It's all the waste, all this waste in the ocean, and we need to deal with it. And this is a clever poster design. It's using actually plastic waste to design the poster and to showing that message. And we love that. And Jury thought, like, wow, this is amazing. And number two, second place. <laughs> and this is Daniel's work. He is on T317 on our third level module. And he's designed a new cot. Quite interesting, because there seems to be some limitations coming up on how cot designs um, can be um, um, done. And he's found a new way of having a very user-friendly, a uh, parents-friendly, back, actually back, friendly design that can very gently put the baby down into the cot and we loved how he communicated it very simply but effectively we loved it so it was our second place ah, yeah. and we love Gail's poster for her game board design. She's also in the first level. And um, this is our third assignment. Um, we are kind of challenging our students to design a board game. And she's done a board game on Vicos and Tarts. Very witty, isn't it? <laughs> Very witty. <laughs> it's lovely. She's designed with so much attention to detail. Little playing pieces and challenge cards. And as you move along the board, you kind of explore the relations that Wicker might have with the community and are challenged. Uh, and we are just absolutely amazed. So well done, Gail. We love it. Thank you so much for submitting. Brilliant. Well, those are absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Um, and for those of you who are interested, we're running a Student Hub Live writing retreat and we're looking at writing for visual purposes next week. Those are in Adobe oh. Connect online. Um, so if you're interested in attending that, very much workshop style based, um, then do come along on Wednesday evenings and you can find out more information from that from the Student Hub Live website. Well, what a fantastic amount of yeah. work that these students yeah. have done. Yeah. And so this is open to everyone. Yes. And for those of you who don't know, you can come to the Earth University campus at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Popular places to go are the library um, <laughs> and also the hub. You can see many of the academic members mm. of staff working around here, all very happy to talk to students. So please do come along. It's free to, to get here. There's plenty of parking. Um, and of course, the exhibition is yeah. on. How long is it on for? Nicole? Unfortunately, just today, because the venue is so packed yeah. that we only have one day to show it. Yeah. But it's and then you'll be challenge. showing these submissions <laughs> online. Mm -hmm. Yes, we try to join um, students online as well. So I hope Gail, our winner, will be coming. She's also having uh, mobility issues, so she cannot come. But that's exactly the reason why we're trying to see the Nexus has a huge screen and we try to join our students online. Yes. And we have got a work with. 
making a website, aren't we, Nick? Okay. And a, a website, so we forgot to say that. <laughs> yeah. So we have a website with those, and I think it's um, you can link to that here. Um, it's a website where we show all the submissions our students have done. So all the work, the hard work that's gone into those posters is acknowledged. And also, we're going to have a video um, from the event, and the video will show basically, you know, how, how the event went for everyone else to, to know. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, we heard from students earlier today, in fact, at the very start of the day, someone was saying that they loved U101 so much they didn't want it to stop. <laughs> but let's take a look at what people said at home when we asked what three words you would associate with design. So about creative flair, communications websites, architecture, useful, practical and beauty, engineering, aesthetics, yeah. buildings, ideas, form and function. And creative art and flair are the most popular words coming up. Now, what you, you mentioned before that some of the pathways and things, but I wonder if we might just spend a, a little minute talking about how we actually teach design at the Open University. Well, we've actually got some really exciting changes mm. coming up in design because um, we, we're extending the, amount, the choice of courses that people can do um, because we have the three core courses, which I mentioned mm. earlier, the U101, 217, 317. But in addition, um, students take curriculum from other parts of the university okay. and, and that has been quite <coughs> constrained up until now mm. but we're, we're, try we're widening the choice, we're going to open up themes in health, sustainability um, and society uh, for the BA as well as the culture and the management streams which are arts and business at the moment and in the BSc side we're going to open up um, themes in energy and also in interfaces and interaction. So people who are more interested in the web design, computer uh, comput human computer interface design stuff can come in and do, and do that. And uh, we're really excited. The other thing that we're very excited about is that we've also had the agreement now for nested qualifications. So that means if you're a student who for some reason isn't able to finish a whole degree, you'll be able um, to, to claim a certificate of higher education or a diploma if you've finished um, all of level one and level two. And so you'll have an interim qualification, which if you want to come back to us, you can trade in and obviously you can finish your degree at a later date. But we're really excited that we've finally been able to make that happen and we hope that that's going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Absolutely, because having a certificate is a, is a great thing, especially if you're already in that line of work. Tell me, who, who are the sorts of students who, who might start on this pathway? Um, so diverse, <laughs> yeah. so diverse. We have people coming in who are very creative and have always wanted to do arts and so on. Other people are coming in because they're thinking about business ideas and wanting to have a bit more design flair. Um, Obviously, we've got people who want to do engineering, but it's kind of light touch engineering. Um, we don't have um, a residential school requirement in our engineering stream, for example. Um, but if you're wanting to work in an engineering related, design mm -hmm. engineering related profession, it may be just what you need. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting people from, from all over the place. And um, in the modules themselves, um, T317, the third level, it's part of so many other courses, um, uh, business and um, environment and engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our students come from, a lot of our students come from engineering on 317. So it's a real good melting yeah. pot. And I love seeing the way that they all interact because, mm -hmm. um, you know, someone might have really creative ideas and someone else is much more on the practical, technical mm -hmm. side. And it's great to see the conversations yeah. that come from that them helping each other yeah. because we have this great tools called Open Design Studio where you can post your work and everyone else can see what you've been doing alone at home but this is your chance to see what everyone else is doing mm. and also to connect and talk about the things you're really concerned mm. about and help each other often we have the question how have you done that oh that's interesting I'm going to try that yeah. now that's so great. it's quite good to connect to others through your design work.
And yeah. I hear it's a really supportive environment as well, where students will offer constructive ideas yeah. as opposed to, you know, critiquing in the traditional sense of, yeah. of art. And, and it's a really helpful space for people to actually move on and share. Yes, absolutely. So it's really all about sharing, learning from each other. Often what we see is actually the lurking. That's quite positive. You just watch over the shoulder. That happens everywhere else. Well, it's like going to an exhibition or an art absolutely. gallery. Absolutely. And you're um, listening in. It's like, oh, that's interesting. You don't necessarily, but we really would like you to, from the lurking, from the just listening in, to then dare to speak up and have ideas, share your ideas, and that's happening. And I think that's the great thing. Mm -hmm. We're building up this capability of, you know, understanding and then sharing your understanding. Excellent. And Linda's put a link in the chat for those of you um, who are in the live session, so you can go and check that out also. Linda and Karen, how's everything with everyone at home? Yeah, it's going really well. Thank you, Karen. Um, lots of interest around the design exhibition. Definitely lots yeah. of interest. Yeah, yeah. people yes. are really keen to see everyone else's work and yes. the posters. Yeah, oh, um, And uh, there are a number of comments about how passionate everybody is uh, on their particular subject area. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so we've said yes, not only just for Student Hub Live either. Even not. Oh, well, that's absolutely fantastic. Anne-Marie, you've been nodding so enthusiastically about your colleagues' work. I wonder if we might just have some final thoughts from you as we end the session. I think it's really important that engineering is not a subject on its own. And, and working with designers, working with other people is part of what it's all about. If you don't look out into... If, engineering's nothing without people. That's what it's all about. It's all about making a better world for people, a much more exciting sustainable wonderful world and designers certainly help us do that and i hope we help designers achieve what oh, they want oh yeah Oh, yeah. wonderful. Well, thank you all. And you certainly are so passionate and enthusiastic. And you've shown us some amazing things that students have done and also some amazing way that students can learn with us. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank OK, we're going to take um, another quick video break. We're going to give you um, a tour of the Open uh, Engineering Labs um, and then we'll be back talking to um, Nick Braithwaite, uh, sorry, Chris Heath, sorry, uh, in our next session where we're going to be meeting some of our researchers at the Open University. Chris does some really amazing work that has real practical applications. So I'm really looking forward to that next session with him. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs>